All right, in today's video, we're going to take a look at um, chemical kinetics for grade 12 chemistry. We're given rate laws, and we're going to be interpreting and applying them. If this is new to you, you can watch the video with me, and I'll have it explained. If it's a review before a test or an exam, then pause the video and try the questions yourself, and then play to see how you did. So in the first example, we've got a balanced equation between oxygen and nitrogen monoxide gases forming nitrogen dioxide gas, and we see a rate law given underneath. There's the differential form of the rate law. Rate equals a rate constant times concentration of NO squared times concentration of O2. We remember that a rate law is just a mathematical statement that shows how the reactants in the reaction, in this case oxygen and nitrogen monoxide, how those reactants affect the rate of reaction. So let's answer these questions down below, true or false, and we'll try to explain each one as we go. So the first statement says that oxygen gas is first order in the reaction. To decide if that's true, you want to look at the rate law, not at the balanced equation. So in the rate law, we see that oxygen's concentration is raised to the power of 1. So this would be a true statement. Oxygen has an order of 1. The orders are the exponents in the rate law. And if its order is a 1, we would, we would call oxygen a first order reactant. If the order were 2, it would be second order. If the order was 0, it would be a 0 order, etc. The overall order is second order. Is that a true or false statement? Well, to get the overall order of the reaction, you again look at the rate law, you again look at the exponents, the orders, and to get the overall order, you'd add them up. So in this case, 2 plus 1, the overall order is actually third order. The overall order is a 3, so this would have been a false statement. The third statement, tripling the nitrogen monoxide concentration would triple the reaction's rate. Is that true or false? To decide that, again, look at the rate law, and you're going to have to think a little bit like an applied mathematics student. Notice that the NO's concentration is raised to the power of 2. It's a second order um, in NO. If we were to uh, triple the NO's concentration, the rate is definitely going to increase, but how much will it increase? To decide that, we take the change that we're applying, we're tripling it, and we raise that to the power of its order, so in this case, a 2. So what we would get is that if we were to triple the NO, we're actually going to get 9 times the rate. Tripling the NO would have resulted in 9 times the rate, not tripling the rate. So this would be a false statement. By that logic, jump in and try number 4. If you were to have the oxygen concentration, in other words, multiply oxygen's concentration by 1 half, would the rate also be half? Is that a true or false statement? Well, oxygen's order was a 1. So by the same logic, we take the effect of having, and we raise to the power of 1, the order for oxygen, and that gives me 1 half. So yes, it's true that if you were to multiply oxygen by 1 half, its concentration by 1 half, the rate would also be multiplied by 1 half. So that's a true statement. If you double both the oxygen and the nitrogen monoxide concentrations, the statement says the rate would double. Is that a true or false statement? Well, let's look back at the rate law. Doubling both of their concentrations, the NO concentration is second order, so doubling the NO's concentration, raising to the power of 2, that by itself would cause four times the rate. But we're not stopping there. We're also doubling the oxygen's concentration, and that would be raised to the power of 1. So the overall effect of doubling the NO and doubling the oxygen would have been 4 times 2. It would have been 8 times the original rate. So the answer here is false. Okay. The reaction could be elementary. Now you remember that an elementary reaction is a reaction that occurs in a single step. Now, how can you decide whether this reaction between oxygen and NO could it have been a single-step reaction? 
the intent of this is not simply to look at the coefficients and say, well, 1 and 2, there's only three particles, so yes, I could imagine that this happens in one step. This is not that simple of a question. What we want to do is compare the coefficients in the balanced equation, in this case 1, O2, and 2 NOs. We want to compare those coefficients to the orders in the reaction rate law. So notice that the NO's coefficient was a 2, and its order is also a 2. Notice that oxygen's coefficient is a 1, and its order is also a 1. Because the orders match the coefficients in the balanced equation, this statement that the reaction could be elementary is true. If the orders match the coefficients, the reaction could be elementary. It doesn't have to be elementary, but it could be. On the other hand, if the orders in the rate law are different, from the coefficients in the balanced equation, then the reaction cannot be elementary. It would have to go through a series of steps through a multi-step reaction mechanism. So when the orders are different from your coefficients in the balanced equation, the reaction cannot be a single-step mechanism. So that is a really important way that the rate law for a reaction gives you a window into the reaction's mechanism. Question number seven, what would be, this is not a true-false state question now, but what would be the effect on the rate if we were to have the oxygen concentration while tripling the NO's concentration? Again, the NO is a second order, the oxygen is first order in the rate law. So to decide what would happen to the rate, we'll take the oxygen, we multiplied its concentration by one half, that's the oxygen, so we'll raise that to the power of one because the oxygen's order is a one. We'll multiply that by having, oh, sorry, tripling the NO, so three, and NO's order was a two in the rate law, so tripling it will have to square the three, so that's the NO. The effect on the rate, then, would be 1 half times 9. It's going to be 9 halves, or 4.5 times faster. The rate will increase 4.5 times faster because of those two things. The last question on this for this reaction, what would be the effect on the rate if you were to double the oxygen's concentration while quadrupling, multiplying by 4, the concentration of NO. Well, again, the oxygen here is being doubled, so we'll raise that to the power of 1, since oxygen's order in the rate law was a 1, and we'll multiply that by the NO, which was being quadrupled, so 4, to the power of 2, since its order was a 2. So 2 times 16 the rate is going to end up being 30 to 32 times faster. So that would be the effect on the rate in part number 8. All right, if you were just looking at that for the first time, you could now pause the video for the second example and try these yourselves. Otherwise, um, stay with me and we'll explain them together. We have another example now, another balanced equation, iodide ions re reacting with S2O8, forming products, and the rate law is given. And I notice right away in the rate law that the orders are both ones. So now, true or false, iodide is first order in the reaction. Well, iodide's order, its exponent in the rate law was a one, so yes, that is true. The overall order is second order. The overall order is the sum of the orders, so 1 plus 1, that is 2, so true. It's a second order overall uh, reaction. The third statement, tripling the concentration of S2O8 would triple the rate. Well, we notice that S2O8's order is a 1, so if you were to triple its concentration, raise that to the power of 1, and you get three times the rate. So tripling the concentration triples the rate. That is true. 
if you were to have the concentration of iodide, the, res the result would be one quarter the original rate. Well, let's check, take a look. If you have one half of the iodide, its order was a one, so we raise that to the power of one, and that gives me one half the rate, not one quarter. So that would have been a false statement. If you double both the iodide and the S2O8, you'll double the rate. Well, again, we've got first order and first order in the rate law, so doubling both would be 2 to the 1 times 2 to the 1. It's going to give me 4 times the original rate, not doubling. So that would be a false statement. This reaction could be elementary. Well, to decide that, we compare the orders in the rate law to the coefficients in the balanced equation. And in this example, we see that they do not match. The coefficient of iodide was a 2, but its order is only a 1. So because they do not match, the coefficient is not the same as the order, we're going to say here that the reaction could not be elementary. This would be a false statement this reaction would have to happen through a multi-step mechanism. What would be the effect um, on the rate if iodide was doubled and the S2O8 was halved? Well, to decide that, we just grab our rate law. They're both first order, so doubling the iodide, 2 to the power of 1, that's going to double the rate, and then one half of the S2O8 raised to the power of 1, that would have the rate. So 2 times 1 half gives me 1 to the power of 1 that would have the rate so 2 times one half gives me 1 so therefore the rate is unaffected. The final rate is going to be 1 times the original rate, so it's unaffected by these changes. What would be the effect on the rate if the iodide was halved and the S2O8 were quadrupled? Well, the iodide one half to the power of one times the thiosulfate quadrupled, so that would be four to the power of one, and that gives me one half times four, which is double the original rate. So the final rate will be twice the original rate because of that. Those two changes. So those are just some ways to apply and interpret. Um, the uh, rate law for a reaction, both predicting the effect on rate by changing concentrations and connecting the rate law to the reaction's mechanism to decide whether it could or could not be an elementary process.